In today's video, I'm going to take a look at how to actually implement a stack in C. It's actually very simple. And the way we're going to do it is first start with a simple array of, let's say, integers. So to start off, we're going to actually define our array here, let's say in stack, and I'm going to store maximum 256 integers. You can change this however you want. I like 256 because it's a power of two. Uh, then we need a count, so we need a way to count however many elements are in the stack. So I'm going to say here count and I'm going to initialize it to zero because there are no elements in the in the stack in the beginning. So first things first, let's actually implement a push operation. Here we're going to have void push and we're just going to give it an x variable, let's say. And this push operation, what it's going to do is going to find the first slot available inside the array and add the element there. Now, how do we find the first slot available inside the array? Suppose this is our array, and let's say we have uh, these elements inside of it, right? We have one, two, three, and five, and the count is going to be four, right? Well, we know that at index zero, there's a number, so we cannot add it here. We, we know that at index one, there's something, at index two, there's something, at index three, there's something, but at index four, there's nothing. And in fact, we want to add it at index four, just like so. Um, and it just so happens that the count is going to always be equal to this index that we need to add to, because uh, count minus one is really the last element that we have added uh, to this array. That means that count is going to be the next free slot. I'm going to add X here. To do so inside the code, all we have to say is stack of count equals x. And this is going to work even if the array is empty, simply because count is going to be zero. If count is zero, you're just going to add it to count of zero, which is the first index. And then, of course, we're going to have to increment count. And really, that's it for pushing elements into the stack. Very, very basic, right? Now, for taking elements from the stack, what we have to do is create a function really, say, pop, and that's going to return an integer, not taking an integer like we did with the one up top. And well, to take in an element from the stack, we need to think about the order these elements were put in place. Remember with Q, link up top if you haven't checked the video about it, uh, we took elements from here, from the left, simply because uh, they are the first one to be added, right? We first added one, then you add two, then you add three, five, and then X, right? And uh, you would take this one inside a, from a Q because it was the first one added. But with a stack, it's different. We take in the last element that was added. So instead of taking the first one, we take in the last one, and just so happens that the last one is the one that we just added, right? So we have to take in the element that is here, but the count did actually change, right? So once we added X, whatever value we have here, to the stack, the count is now five, right? So we're gonna have to take the element at a stack of count minus one, because that is the index here. So I'm gonna say here, uh, int result equals stack of count minus one. Simple as that. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna decrement count and also return our our res here. And now we can actually do some operations with these uh, with this stack. We can say let's push one and then two, three, and five, like we did in the example up top. And let's say we have a for loop, so in i, I'm gonna say i equals zero i less than four, we have only four elements, and I'm gonna print f percent d space, uh, I'm gonna print f the return value of pop, right? And in this order, we should see that five is going to be the first one printed because the fi five was the last one to enter the stack. So if I try to launch this, you will notice that I get five, three, two, one, instead of one, two, three, five, the way we got it with the Q. And similarly, like we did with the queue, it would be nice to add some conditions here. So if uh, count is already to 56, the number here that we added is the number of slots we have in the stack, 
then we cannot add anything anymore. So I'm gonna just uh, printf to the standard error saying that uh, there's no space in the stack. And I'm gonna return out of that function. And similarly in the pop function, I'm gonna say if count is actually zero, then there's nothing to take from the stack, right? There's no elements. So we can simply say fprintf to standard error output and say uh, nothing to take from stack. And then backslash n, and then we can return. And now here uh, you can either exit and just crash the program altogether, or I can return negative one, but that only works if um, your stack has positive integers only. So uh, error handling really depends on the way you want to do it here. It could be done in many different ways, but this is the very basic way of doing it. And now if I, well, if I run it again, it's gonna run the same way. That's no problem, five, three, two, one. But if I change this to a five accidentally trying to take five elements from a stack that only has four, uh, it's going to run and actually print on the screen nothing to take from stack. And it's gonna give us a negative one because that is what we got here. And that's really all there is to uh, a stack in C. I think it's the easiest way to implement a stack. Really, you only have to do uh, an assignment and an increment. Heck, you can even do it in one line if you wanted to. You can do it like this. Uh, I just think this is more readable. And you only did need to do this. And again, you can do this in one line by just decrementing it at the count here as well. But I do it like so because it is more readable. You don't need the functions actually. You can just uh, add and subtract from the stack just using these two lines from each function. And also notably, you don't actually need a struct really to implement a stack or a queue. You can just simply have an array that is global or maybe dynamically allocated. Okay, I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, leave them down comments below or on our Discord server. Again, the source code for all this will be found on our website, link in the description below. Take care, bye.